So we're gonna cut the back piece here first. I'm using my trusty tight drywall square. This is simple. All you're doing is cutting the paper on the outside. So now that our tub is in, it's time to close up the walls. This is what we call a, our substrate. It's the material that goes behind the tile. It's a little contrary to what's taught on TV nowadays. Everybody's seen the green board, the blue board. Well, we're gonna be using a superior quality waterproofing system, which is gonna prevent any of this board from ever getting wet. So it doesn't make any sense to invest a whole lot of money in something that's going behind our security system. So we got our wall board cut for the side and we're gonna make the holes for the, our shower fixture and our tub spout. Now there are other ways to do this. I have a Rota zip tool, which is a drywall cutting tool, spiral saw, Just zip this out no problem. You could also use a hole saw kit. But for the purpose of what we're doing here today, we're just demonstrating some of the basic hand tools you can get away with. If you wanted to use a cement backboard, you could. But that's really difficult to work with if you don't have the right saw blades and tools. So, We've installed this tub flush to this wall. Now these tubs, they come with an integrated tile flange. The Maryland tile flange is pretty thick. So uh, if we try to split the difference, we'll end up with our wall board coming down on top of it and not quite covering it. And then the tile will come down and then have to cover that way. It looks ugly. So what I do is I like to go flush to the wall. And if I'm gonna have a hole here, I can actually get strapping right in behind here. So the purpose of adding the build out is to bring the finished wall over top of the tile flange so that my new tile will go straight down onto the interior of the tub without having any of the ugly curves or bends in order to make that adjustment. This is a 33 and a half, that's fine, ugly. Because we're building this out, the new drywall won't meet up with the old one. So I picked up a piece of uh, metal J trim molding. You'll find that in the trim section for drywall where you get your outside corners and inside corners, U-channel, that sort of thing. So this one actually wraps the drywall on three sides. And by doing that, it'll give me a natural end to my tile. And I can actually just caulk that with the old drywall and then finish paint right on top of that metal. So there's no mud work or anything like that to be done. The trick here is I have to cut this one piece of drywall out of one piece, no, no joints attach that J trim, and then install it all as one piece. So the measurements have got to be pretty exact this time. 
We've ripped everything up. We've changed our water supply. We have our new faucet. We've got a brand new tub. We have our waste and overflow connected. We have built out our wall. We have fixed our vapor barrier. We've remediated any mold behind the wall. We have closed it all up with new drywall. Yes, and there's a gap here. I know, don't be so judgmental. Here's the issue. I want it tight at the ceiling. This is a bigger issue than here. When I put my waterproofing membrane on, I'm gonna fill this with cement and cover it over with a cloth and it'll be rock hard anyway. So it'll have no cause and effect. 